uh, was related to um, the uh, geometry and the topology, really, of the uh, complex um, points. So we're going to show that, um, oops, that this is d log, meaning d by dt log um, of a rational function, p0 of t, p2 of t, all the way up to p twice the dimension, uh, p1 of t, p3 of t, p2d minus 1 um, uh, of of t, where um, uh, p i of t um, was the characteristic polynomial of um, uh, the action of uh, relative Frobenius on a cohomology theory that we haven't defined, um, say with uh, uh, QL coefficients. Um, and um, uh, this is a, um, a, a consequence of the Lefschetz um, uh, fixed point theorem. So let's, let's recall that um, F is the relative Frobenius, where we raise, if, um, if we've got a projective variety, we raise all of the homogeneous coordinates to their qth powers. Um, and uh, we have a tall cohomology um, which are uh, derived functors of, of push forwards from an abelian category of, um, of a tall sheaves. So we've got H I um, a tall uh, uh, QL coefficients and um, uh, uh, this can make a uh, functor um, uh, that takes uh, products of schemes to the tensor product of their, um, their cohomologies. Um, and this satisfies A1 invariance and um, Nisnevich descent and determines a functor um, to a derived category of elatic sheaves. chain complexes, but with an action of the Galois group. So um, we've, we have this cohomology theory that's going to give us a chain complex, some vector spaces, QL vector spaces for smooth proper. They're finite, um, but um, this is going to be uh, the, um, uh, it's one of the things about atoll cohomology uh, that the atoll sheaves on spec K are like um, uh, uh, vector spaces with a Galois action. Um, so this is a uh, derived uh, category of um, uh, least uh, of allatic sheaves. Um, it's uh, uh, it, it's a cohomology theory. Um, so the the rationality. Um, yes, please. The R gamma. And, and the other question is, I don't understand how this makes sense inverting P1. Because doesn't P1 have like a non-trivial Galois co cohomology? Well, it's just got to be invertible. Time. And so it's got the, um, it's, uh, it's definitely perfect. So I mean, you make but a tensor invertible. No, I so it is tensor invertible. I agree it's invertible. But um, so you're saying that like it just shifts by this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it defines something on, on SH. Thanks. Um, uh, okay, so, um, uh, um, and, and anyway, the HI, they're vector spaces over QL of finite dimension with an action of Galois. Um, uh, but um, we can compute trace uh, after applying any functor that preserves the structure we use to define trace, which was the tensor product. So maybe the, the purpose for writing this down is to say that it preserves the uh, symmetric monoidal structure, so it's a symmetric monoidal functor, or it's a um, it's a tensor functor. 
Um, uh, and uh, so the um, trace, well, so, so we can compute the trace after applying a tall cohomology. Um, and uh, I think that's all we need to say before doing this formal manipulation. Um, actually, I'd like to make one more uh, general comment on the level of um, uh, this, uh, of, of Frobenii. So the, the last um, comment, if you'll forgive me, so is that if you'll take FQ bar, and we did this just absolute Frobenius where we raise everything to the uh, qth power, um, uh, then uh, this by Galois theory is FQ. So that the fixed points of, um, uh, so um, this, this leads to the fact that the, the fixed points under F or even F to the M uh, are the points uh, X, F, Q to the M. So those are our fixed points of our, our, of our absolute Frobenius that it comes from you know, taking the values of those coordinates Xi um, and needing them to be fixed under, under the Frobenius raising, uh, raising anything uh, to its, its Q to the nth power. All right, so without, without further ado, um, uh, let's uh, prove the rationality statement given the Lefschetz fixed point theorem, um, which is then formal as follows. So we're interested in computing this generating function. Um, and so we've just decided that all of the fixed points, um, uh, um, that, that this, this set is the fixed points of Frobenius. Um, I guess that there was one more general comment I wanted to make, um, which is that it's a fact that we're, we're about to come back to later, but that um, if, um, if, uh, if you have this function, like take a fixed point x in, um, in uh, the, the, the fixed points of some endomorphism of x uh, and the derivative uh, evaluated at x, um, which is acting on the tangent space 2x, so, so say x is an isolated fixed point, Isolated, and uh, uh, the this is then an automorphism of the the tangent space. Well, it's an endomorphism of the tangent space. It could have a kernel, um, but uh, as in if um, if that map weren't a tall. So if this is an iso, that implies that the index um, uh, um, in here, or it, it implies that the um, the uh, index as an integer is one. So we had a Lefschetz fixed point theorem that we're going to invoke here and that says that if we want to know this integer, uh, we can take the trace of uh, f to the m. Uh, t m minus one, um, and viewing this as an integer, that um, uh, that integer is the induced map uh, by cohomology of endomorphisms of one to endomorphisms of one is sending. Um, uh, well, th this is giving you an, an integer. So we, we can put this here for free. So technically, when we defined this, it was an in, in an endomorphisms of here. And Fabian talked about that uh, yesterday. But we want an integer. Um, uh, so the, um, the, um, the endomorphisms of the unit here, the tensor unit is QL in degree 0. And its um, endomorphisms are the QL itself. Um, so if we uh, um, 
uh, so the, uh, this number here um, is picking up the, the trace um, of, the, of the Frobenius, say by the left shed's fixed point theorem. Yes? The, just the homology. So um, technically, the trace, if we wrote a tall cohomology here, the trace is in the endomorphisms of the unit. So um, I wanted to get to this a little bit later. But um, so the trace is in the endomorphisms, pardon, of one. And we wrote this as uh, SH. And Fabian gave us, we're going to come back to this in just a minute, a talk about what that is. And it's a little more than an integer. So I had started out writing this. But that's a little more than an integer. So, so we, we got a little bit of ahead of ourselves in here. Um, uh, but there's a map to the integers. And then under that map, that's what this is. Now, as it happens, uh, we can apply cohomology and then get down to a place where the trace is QL. And that, that integer is just going to that integer. Um, so uh, this really is just formal. The, the fixed points, the number of fixed points of Frobenius are um, the trace of um, of, uh, of f to the m. And since the h star uh, is symmetric venoidal, it preserves the tensor product. Um, we can switch the order. One more time. Not, there's, no, there's no minus one to the m yet, because we've taken a trace of Frobenius. And then we're taking this. I shouldn't have put this from SH. I see that this is too fancy for what we're doing right now. But since we're getting there anyway, and we've already done it, let's talk. Um, the, uh, whenever you have a tensor functor, um, if you had a functor H, see here. Um, uh, when you have a functor H, uh, C to D, and it's symmetric monoidal, and these are symmetric monoidal, then um, uh, dualizable objects go to dualizable objects. We get an induced map that we're also calling H from the endomorphisms of 1 in C to the endomorphisms of 1 in D. That's just functoriality. Forget. Um, uh, <clears throat> uh. But this is all in degree 0. I mean, by the time we're doing this, I mean, this is a map from the sphere to itself. And it's just, you know, it's hanging out in degree 0. So then when we compute the trace, when we tr switch the order, then we get the minus 1s. Yeah, sorry about this. I mean, uh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, uh, one summary that is completely valid, except we didn't happen to set up the, t the talk that way, is that the number of fixed points is the trace of Frobenius, and it's an integer. But um, one of the fun things we'll do in these lectures is make the trace of Frobenius larger in, um, in Morel's, uh, in, in, uh, in here. All right. Um, so so let's so uh, so we've got um, a generating function for the number of fixed points. It's a trace of Frobenius. We can apply cohomology to compute the trace, and cohomology can move in or out. And then when we're on a chain complex, as Mark is saying, this by we we did this last time as example two. Um, the trace on of something on homology is a sum over all degrees um, of uh, the trace of f acting on now the ith one. And now we switch the sums. So i is going over all indices, minus 1 to the i, uh, 
uh, sum m greater than or equal to 1 of trace of f to the m, all acting on this one fixed vector space. t to the m minus 1. And then it's algebra that whenever you took, this is now an endomorphism of a finite dimensional vector space. This is just a finite dimensional vector space. So f is, um, f is, a, is a matrix. And when we take trace of nth powers to the matrix, t to the m minus 1, it's algebra that that's the same thing as um, uh, d log of the um, characteristic polynomial minus d log. So that's how um, a, a generating function out of um, traces of powers of a matrix work. Um, and that pulling out the extra minus 1, um, uh, uh, that's this. So with, with log, then this is, this is then pulling the d log out all the way in front. This is over the product, because the, the log is a, a homomorphism of p i of t minus 1 to the i plus 1. Okay. So the zeta function is rational. Um, and uh, so uh, let's um, make the following definition. Um, so this is joint with Margaret Dillow, Wei Ho, Padma Srinivasan. and Isabel Voigt. Um, and the definition is that if we had, um, so let x um, be dualizable in, um, in some stable motivic homotopy category. For example, x could be smooth and proper over a finite field. Um, uh, then the logarithmic, uh, then uh, define the A1 logarithmic uh, zeta function um, uh, is defined d log zeta a1 x of t is the sum of um, the traces now in sh of b of, in fact, let's give ourselves, um, and then, um, So let f x to x be any endomorphism. And then uh, we can define it as traces of the powers of s. For instance, it could be the Frobenius uh, uh, t to the m minus 1. Um, so uh, let's get back to this confusing point about where this lives. So this is in uh, endomorphisms of the unit. And then SH of B, uh, it has coefficients in there, and it's a power series in T. Um, and we saw um, uh, yesterday, and it's a theorem of Morel, that four finite fields are any fields, that this has a beautiful description. So for K field, um, with a perfectness assumption um, removed um, by Mark Hoy Wa, um, that the endomorphisms of the unit in SHK is this growth in Diegvit group. Uh, 
Um, so uh, GW of K is the group completion, adding formal inverses um, of isomorphism classes of symmetric non-degenerate bilinear forms. In fact, it'll be useful to have um, uh, um, the possibility to go to other rings with this. So let's um, extend that like so. You can uh, sheafify and make an unramified uh, sheaf um, as in the work of Fabienne. Um, so we have group completion of symmetric non-degenerate bilinear forms. Um, let's have some notation. So for instance, we have a symmetric non-degenerate bilinear form for a unit in A. Um, we can take A as um, a projective module over itself. And a one bilinear form that we could do takes x, y um, to uh, a, x, y. Um, so for uh, example, the um, growth and Vick group of a uh, finite field Uh, if we take u that's not a square, um, then we can't make a basis change uh, of for a and make that one. Um, and it's a non-trivial element, so we've got the element bracket u. And we can take arbitrary sums of that, and that maps in here. Um, that's square is a square. Um, so we get relations. Um, uh, this relation comes from the fact that uh, over a finite field, um, the, the rank and the discriminant determine a group isomorphism, and this is a ring uh, isomorphism. The rank um, takes um, a bilinear form on a projective module to the rank of the projective module, or if it's a vector space, that is also called the dimension. You could write it like that. It takes um, B cross B. the dimension of V. The discriminant of a quadratic form, or of a bilinear form, rather, is you express that bilinear form as a matrix, and you take its determinant. Um, uh, so for the case of uh, x smooth and proper over a finite field, um, we're getting another uh, z mod 2 for every one of our, our traces. Um, so uh, it follows from taking uh, um, a tall realizations that if you take the rank of uh, the enriched of the uh, A1 logarithmic zeta function, you get the logarithmic derivative of the zeta function. Um, so x smooth proper over fq then the rank of d log zeta x one is indeed the logarithmic derivative of, of zeta uh, x of, um, of t. Um, and this is now in power series with coefficients in z. Um, 
uh, um, uh, we can calculate these traces with the enrichment of the Lefschetz fixed point theorem uh, from Hoywa. And uh, to do that, um, we're going to have to be a little more specific about the indices. Um, and to do that, let's um, look at the, some transfers. We um, uh, saw them in, in, in Brian's uh, uh, talk. Um, not the multiplicative kind, just the additive. So uh, let's define for A in a total a finite a tall extension. Let's find the transfer from uh, bilinear forms uh, over a twiddle to those over A. And we take a bilinear form on a projective module. And we send it. We can view that module over a twiddle as a module over A. Um, and then uh, we have the trace form of the Atoll algebra, A over, so this is the, um, if you express it, if you express um, multiplication by an element of A twiddle um, as a matrix over A, then we take the trace of that matrix. So in Galois theory, <clears throat> it's the sum of the, the, the Galois conjugates for that kind of um, uh, Atoll uh, extension. Um, so as an example, Let's compute the trace um, on growth and decay groups for uh, finite field extensions, for extensions of finite fields. Um, so, an example. Um, let's do the trace F. QD over FQ of 1, and this is going to be D if uh, D is odd, and it's going to be D minus 1 plus U if D is even. Um, and to see this, uh, let's, um, uh, we need to write down um, uh, the fq to the d as an fq vector space because we're just we're looking still at fq to the d so um, as an uh, fq vector space it's we can say that fq to the d it's fq adjoin x over some um, polynomial uh, p of x and so we've got one x x to the d minus one is an FQ basis. Um, the Galois group is a um, uh, is the powers of, of Frobenius, um, but you, we could do this for um, separable extensions more generally. The answer is that the discriminant of the polynomial is the discriminant of the trace form. So G one uh, G L. Actually, let's call this G two, and this will be G one. Let's call this the Galois group of FQ to the D um, over FQ. Um, so uh, we've got our basis, and we, um, uh, we multiply any two elements of our basis, and we have to take the trace, and we put that in a matrix, and that, that's the answer. And that can be um, expressed um, in terms of a product of, a, of an auxiliary matrix, where we've got 1 x, um, x to the D minus 1. And then in the ith column, we've got gi of 1, which is 1, gi of x, gi of x to the d minus 1. And then um, if you take m times m transpose, uh, the ij element in here, it's the sum. And we've got x and g2 of x and gi of x. And then the transpose over here, we get x to the j, g2 of um, x to the j. So we're getting the sum as L goes as, um, uh, as um, uh, as a goes from 1 um, to L of ga of xi x 
j. Um, in other words, the transfer of fq to the d over fq of 1 is represented by the matrix m, m transpose. Um, and we know that as a group, what we have to do is understand the rank and the discriminant. The rank is d, and that's, that's good in both cases, so we're good on the rank. So we want to take the discriminant, which is the determinant of this, um, but the determinant of m times m transpose is the determinant of m squared. Determinant of m, m transpose is the discriminant of the trace f q to the d. F Q one, which is the determinant of M uh, squared, um, and uh, M is a von der Mond determinant. Um, so its determinant is the <coughs> the um, uh, the product over um, G I X minus G um, uh, J uh, X um, is, you know, here are the powers of that one, here are the powers of G I, because this is also G I um, of X to the D minus one, because G I is indeed a field homomorphism. So that's, that's the determinant of M, and so then squared, um, we need to know if this is, in, is a square or not. So we need to know if the product without the square is fixed by Frobenius. So um, the discriminant of um, trace fq to the d fq of 1 is a square if and only if the product of gix minus gjx is fixed by Frobenius, the Frobenius acts as a D cycle on these folks. Those are all the Galois conjugates. So this is if and only if a D cycle is an even permutation, which is if and only if D is odd. And that's the same thing we claimed up there. Um, uh, claiming that, uh, that, um, that we didn't have a, a discriminant um, for, uh, for d odd. Um, okay. Um, let's go back to the um, Hoi-Wes fixed point formula. And then the, um, the indices are this transfer um, uh, with, with bracket 1 minus uh, the derivatives determinant. Um, so the, uh, a more precise statement So uh, let K be a field. Uh, let X be smooth proper K scheme. Um, let uh, F X to X um, uh, be an endomorphism. Um, with a tall fixed points. And then um, the trace uh, of F is 
the sum over those fixed points of um, the, uh, this, this uh, transfer. Um, and then uh, the definition of a tall uh, fixed points is that the identity minus the derivative of f uh, as a, a map of the tangent space of x um, is an isomorphism. So we could take its um, uh, determinants and, and stick, it, uh, stick it in brackets. Um, uh, so for example, um, uh, this implies because the derivative of Frobenius is zero. So if we have x over fq with um, the relative Frobenius, um, that implies that uh, the index xf is the transfer from k of x, k of f, yeah, k of x down to fq of one, because df is zero in characteristic p. Since Frobenius is raising uh, to to powers of p, um, so thus the um, logarithmic a1 zeta function can be computed in terms of those solutions over finite fields. So just like the zeta function, the logarithmic zeta function is recording the solutions over finite fields. Um, so thus, uh, d log x over x over fq, uh, smooth proper, Uh, d log zeta x uh, a1 of t is a sum as m um, uh, uh, ranges over all, all possible things of the trace of Frobenius to the m. Um, but then this is the, um, so let's let, let alpha of d equal the number of points of x with residue field points p over x of x with residue field um, the extension uh, of rank d. Um, so uh, whenever d divides m, that point will wind up fixed by Frobenius to the m. And we know um, that we're going to contribute. So this is a sum over d dividing m of alpha of d, and we know we're going to contribute the trace form of f q to the d over f q of 1 times t m minus 1. Um, uh, so this is the same information. Um, as what we wanted to start with. Um, in, in the story about relating solutions over finite fields um, to, to the shape uh, uh, by Mobius inversion. So there's a way to um, go back and forth. Um, the, if you take uh, D alpha D and sum over all the divisors of M, you get this, and there's a Mobius inversion formula to go the other direction. So um, using things that we know about um, uh, 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 zeta functions, um, uh, Xiao Wen Hu shows that d log zeta is always rational. Xiao Wen Hu, x smooth proper over fq implies that d log zeta a1 x t 
is um, rational, um, we, we can furthermore um, uh, compute uh, what it is. So, um, for example, you can get a computer to compute hyperelliptic curves very nicely. Um, uh, so, if we take the elliptic curve, y squared equals x cubed plus x plus 5 over um, f13, uh, then d log zeta a1 of x t is equal to uh, 9 plus 170 plus u times t um, plus uh, 2,268 uh, t squared um, plus 28,898 plus u t cubed plus, um, uh, and you can keep going. Um, uh, since you can compute this, you, know, you can find out that you're, you're not getting um, the same uh, enrichment as in Kapranov's uh, motivic uh, zeta function. Um, so, uh, um, uh, we can take um, uh, a growth and deep group of varieties. So if we let k naught varieties over k be the free abelian group, on um, k varieties um, over the relation that if you take a closed subvariety y and take it out of x, um, uh, they're set equal. That that sum is is set equal. Um, uh, and uh, Kapranov has a, an enrichment of the, the zeta function where the coefficients are in, in K naught uh, varieties. And the natural guess would be that if you took the trace of Frobenius on uh, Kapranov's motivic zeta function, and you took d log that you would recover um, the, um, the enrichment we, we just defined. Um, but you don't. In fact, you don't get any kind of quadratic enrichment at all. You always land in the integers. Um, uh, you could do some other things if you, if you wanted, although there wouldn't be a natural reason to believe that they should um, be equal. Uh, but this is, although this is really enriched, it's not, um, it's not, it's not the same. Um, uh, uh, however, um, uh, uh, just like um, uh, Kapranov's, this is a motivic measure. So it defines a homomorphism with an appropriate ring structure on K naught of varieties and an appropriate ring structure on power series. So the logarithmic a1 zeta function um, is a ring homomorphism. Is a ring homomorphism, um, which is what motivic measure means. Um, uh, so um, we, we used a tall cohomology to pick up the trace at the beginning uh, of the lecture, um, and, and that worked. So um, let's try to pick up the quadratic part, the bilinear form quadratic enrichment, um, with another uh, um, uh, cohomology theory. Uh, 
So um, for cellular varieties, we can do this as follows. So this is joint with um, um, Margaret Ballou, Weho, Padma Srinivasan, and Isabel Voigt. So for X, uh, smooth, projective, and cellular, Uh, over a perfect field. K and um, F X to X, an endomorphism, uh, then the, um, the logarithmic uh, zeta function can be computed using Morel and Savant's uh, cellular uh, A1 um, homology. So then D log zeta A1 um, X of T is a sum as R goes from zero to the dimension of minus, now uh, minus one in brackets to the R D by DT log of um, P R of T, um, where um, uh, P R of T is the characteristic polynomial of, an, um, of a matrix, of a square matrix with coefficients in the growth and decay group. Um, so PR of T is the determinant of one minus um, uh, uh, T F acting on C star cell of x, where this, the, the f acting on this um, is a square matrix of elements in GW um, of uh, k and C cell star denotes the A1 cellular complex um, of Morel and Savant. Um, okay, uh, so uh, for example, before we define um, the, uh, the cellular A1 homology, um, uh, Pn is cellular, so we could look at Pn over Fq with the Frobenius uh, acting on it. And uh, Pn has a zero cell, um, a one cell, an n cell, um, uh, and um, uh, the Frobenius on uh, Pn, it raises all of its coordinates to the qth power. Um, uh, these cells here, the, the successive quotient, well, um, so the one cell is like a P1, and the way Frobenius would act on that, um, uh, so there's a one cell in there, that's a P1, and we have P1 going to P1, and uh, as we just remarked, that's x naught, x1 going, mapping to x naught to the q, x1 uh, uh, to the q. Um, uh, and the way uh, Frobenius is going to act on this cellular homology, we haven't defined it yet, but will be by the degree from uh, Fabian's talk of uh, f acting on that. And uh, the degree as could be computed um, uh, with elementary methods is um, a one plus a minus one plus a one all the way up to Q times. So it's the sum as I goes from zero to Q minus one of minus one to the I. There's abbreviated notation for that. So there's just notation. This is called Q epsilon. So sorry to stick it in a corner, 
but a number with an epsilon below it is one in brackets plus minus one in brackets plus one in brackets until you get um, a Q of them. Uh, so that's how you act on the one cell. And then how you act on the R cell is um, by the, the Rth wedge, um, which when you take the degree of a, uh, the smash, smash, wedge in LaTeX, smash in, in math, um, you get uh, QR to the um, E. So the, um, uh, it's, it's believable that what should happen when you act Frobenius on a, a homology theory that picks up the quadratic part um, uh, would be that on the rth cell, you act like Q epsilon to the R. And that's indeed true. So P R of T is equal to one minus Q epsilon to the R T and uh, D log zeta P N A one of T is the sum um, uh, uh, via that formula, r equals zero to d minus minus one to the r, one minus q epsilon uh, to the r um, t. So uh, you can also figure out how many points there are in Pn over a finite field, and you could add them all up and use do the appropriate trace forms. We have all of that to do. You can do that, it's actually a fun combinatorial exercise, and you, in, you see that you indeed get this, but the explanation for those combinatorial manipulations is that you have one cell in every, for, for zero, one, et cetera, and you act by Q epsilon to the, uh, to the R. Um, so uh, let's um, uh, uh, define the uh, morel savant a1 uh, cellular homology, um, or set some things up to, um, to continue with the story uh, next time. So um, Fabian Morel and Anand Savant defined an A1 uh, cellular homology and Bendarko has related um, uh, ideas. Um, uh, so let's uh, work over a perfect field and let's consider um, the strictly A1 invariant uh, sheaves of abelian groups we were looking at this morning. Um, So let's have the um, uh, billion category of Nesnevit sheaves of abelian groups. Um, and inside, um, we have these uh, strictly A1 uh, invariant ones. And on the one hand, we can, um, if we're defining cellular things, we could just give ourselves a filtration and um, do some cohomology. So, or actually, um, uh, so let's um, define. Um, uh, uh, let's define uh, Hn A1 of um, uh, a smooth scheme uh, X to be pi I A1 of uh, uh, the, uh, take um, the, the free abelian group on the, the sheaf of, of con complexes and then take pi I1 from this morning and we can do a re reduced version like if we had a pointed space X if X was pointed 
um, then we can mod out by an image of the homology of a point, or we can um, take uh, the free abelian group but where the, the point is the base point um, and uh, get a homology theory that's very hard to compute for the reasons this morning that the um, motivic localization implicit in here is, is not easily controlled. Um, so Morel and Savant uh, have a different way of controlling um, their, their cellular uh, homology. Um, so let's start by giving ourselves a filtration and then uh, uh, give a, um, a uh, an observation of theirs that says that this is less dependent on the filtration than you would expect. Um, so X is cellular if there's a filtration. Uh, X is um, cellular if um, there is increasing, there, is, there are open subsets of uh, X in an increasing filtration. Um, and let's make their s dot t dot for such that, such that the successive differences, uh, uh, omega i minus omega i minus one, um, is some number of cells uh, um, that we'll assume to be affine, uh, some number of them, um, which implies uh, that um, uh, the, um, by purity, um, the uh, omega i over omega i minus one is a Tom space. I'm sorry, I don't know why this is uh, squeaking. But anyway, it, uh, it's still a Tom space by purity. And moreover, all bundles on A uh, n are trivial. Um, so what this is, um, is it's P1, it's the Tom space of a trivial bundle, which is P1 smash um, I smash these cells. Um, and we can take a long exact sequence in the A1 homology that's difficult to compute, but nonetheless has the formal properties where you could do omega I, omega I minus one, and then H I minus one A1 Um, et cetera. And um, just like you would define CW uh, homology, um, you can then uh, uh, get boundary maps where your chain complex consists of, of those groups. So um, C star cell. definition of Fabian and Anon is that um, C star cell um, of X is the, um, the H I A1 of the filtration with the, um, the boundary maps from those um, from, from uh, gluing together those exact sequences. Um, but this is actually functorial uh, up to canonical homotopy, independent of the filtration. Um, so um, we're, we're, uh, we are out of time, um, uh, um, but, but let's, let's discuss that uh, next time and leverage um, that intrinsic uh, description to, uh, to consider non-cellular um, varieties um, as well as conjectured by uh, Fabian and Anand. I'll stop there, thank you.